great. So welcome uh, to the uh, Female Health Challenges in your 30s, 40s, and 50s featuring Annie Trimberger this morning for our learning lab. Appreciate you all joining us. Um, Annie is a life and health coach with her company is called The Dream Lab, and she works with professional women. And her mission in life is to help women step into their greatness after being to uh, greatness by being happier, healthier, and wealthier, which we all <laughs> love that, right? Yes. So anyways, I'm going to turn it over to Annie here and because she always has a full program. And we're just thrilled to have you join us, Annie. Thank you Thank very much. You. Thank you. I am really excited to be here, um, especially as I was saying to Jackie, um, my husband and I have our first baby coming um, any day now. I'm 37 weeks tomorrow, so I'm glad I could be here and get this in before the baby comes. Um, so yeah, as Jackie said, I am a life and health coach. I work primarily with professional women and women business owners. Before I started doing this, I was a uh, um, a division one athlete in college and a um, big firm lawyer for eight years. So I certainly understand the pressure and the demands that um, professional women and women business owners face. And it really is my passion in life to just help women, um, like Jackie said, really step into your greatness, being happier, being healthier, being wealthier. And all three of those things at once, not just one, you know, really nailed and the other two you know, in chaos somewhere, but, but all of those things um, in harmony and in balance. I would love to do live coaching on this um, learning lab as I promised. So I usually like to start these things and just have everyone go around and it's a quick introduction. And if you could share, you know, why you're interested in this webinar or, oh, she didn't want to share. That's okay. <laughs> um, you know, you know, kind of what drew you to this, if you have any specific questions and that way I can do some um, coaching as we go along and not just, you know, versus just me lecturing. So um, can, we'll start with Jackie, if you want, and then we'll go Liz and then Christy. Yes. Um... Good morning, I'm Jackie Agmark. I am the executive director of NABO. And I am approaching my, I'm in my 50s, approaching my 60s and looking at um, needing some help to kind of jumpstart um, uh, my health journey, weight loss journey, um, you know, dealt with some health issues over time and um, just looking to feel better, really. So thank you. Everyone Annie. wants to feel better. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Jackie. Um, Liz, how about you? I recently, well, let's see, I'm in my early fifties, mm -hmm. uh, the post menopause plus COVID 15, mm -hmm. um, plus just kind of finding a new rhythm to my days, uh, became an entrepreneur, uh, almost two years ago. Oh, congratulations. And thank you. Um, and it, it's easy to slip into either all work or all flexibility and being there for family. So how do I put myself and my health first mm -hmm. so that I can, you know, live a long life, quality of life, offset things like we've got a family strain of Alzheimer's. So what can I do to mm -hmm. ensure my best health as long as possible? Yeah, that's so important. Um, I just saw like a meme or something the other day that someone was like, I didn't want to work the nine to five. So I started my own business and now I work 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah, totally. <laughs> right. It's totally, <laughs> totally happens. Um, and just what is your business? Uh, I'm hoping to open a co-working space oh, next year. So, and in the great. meantime, doing some consulting and some um, online professional development. Oh, mm -hmm. that's so fun. Love it. Okay. Um, Christy, if you could take yourself off mute and introduce yourself. Hi. Yeah. Hi. So I'm Christy. Um, I work for um, Bank Cherokee out in St. Paul. 
Um, this was um, referred by one of my co-workers, Julie Novak. So that's how I, I found out about this. Yeah, she's my banker. <laughs> yeah. So um, I've just been, um, I'm in my mid 40s. Um, so just looking for, you know, life, work, balance, all that fun stuff. Um, I've had a lot of health issues. So um, healthy is is you know, health is a great thing to me, but um, okay. yeah, so I'm just new to all this. Great. Well, welcome. Thank and you. Tabitha, hi. We got you logged on to stay this time, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I had uh, issues there, but that's fine. Well, um, welcome. Yeah, so I'm not sure if you could hear when I said that, but I'd just love to have everyone just do a quick introduction and then, you know, what drew you to this or if you have any specific questions so I can do a little uh, coaching as we go along through today's learning lab. Um, yeah, I was, I'm very curious to just engage and, you know, learn as much as I can. Um, you know, I'm a, a financial advisor uh, in pending and on this, this journey I'm opening myself out there to, you know, see, you know, any opportunities of learning LARPs, uh, if I have the time to, you know, get on and learn as more as, as much as I can. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, welcome. Okay, well, let's get into it. I'm going to share my screen and pull up my slides. And um, we'll get right into it. Okay. Um, and, you know, since we do have such an intimate group this morning, you guys feel free to just stop me at any point if you have questions or anything you want me to go into further, no need to um, leave that all to the end. Uh, we'll just we'll just have more of a discussion. I think that'll be really fun. So um, let's go to this first one. Okay, so, you know, just who this is for, it sounds like everyone's in the right room, but, you know, for anyone watching later, you know, this is really, this presentation, this learning lab is for definitely women, women over 30, I, you know, it sounds like everyone's in that camp, but everything starts to change as you get to your later 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Um, it's a whole different game than when, you know, we were in our 20s and early 30s. Um, this is for maybe if you feel like frustrated and exhausted of trying really hard and not seeing results. Um, that is one of the things I am super passionate about. A lot of my clients come to me saying, I tried this, I tried this, I tried this, and it's not working. Or they start feeling like the problem is with them and like they're not good enough. And if they just had more willpower or could stick with you know, something longer, they'd be a success. And that is rarely the case for reasons that I'm going to go through today. A lot of times it's about the fact that women are, are doing actually the wrong things for their body. And we don't know because most of the health marketing is targeted towards, um, targeted towards women, but actually research based on men or, you know, very young women. So there's a lot of important things to consider. Um, and I, then this is just for anyone who's like really confused and who just wants like the answer, like what am I supposed to be doing to take care of myself? There's so much conflicting information out there. You know, should I be, do, should I do keto? Should I go vegan? Is yogurt good? Is yogurt bad? Like, should I be, you know, doing this or that? And um, a lot of times the answer is also confusing because the answer is maybe like, um, it depends, uh, which can be pretty frustrating. Uh, as a former lawyer, I'm very comfortable with that answer of it depends, but that's not a great answer to give um, to most people who are just looking for a simple solution. Um, but it, it really does depend on your body, your preferences, your lifestyle, your history, your family, um, family history, stuff like that. So a lot of this is sort of a, a you know, starting with some basic principles that applies to everyone. And then from there, really paying attention to your body and kind of doing trial and error to see what works for you, what works with your life, what works with your body chemistry, uh, what works with your personal preferences. And that's what I do with my clients. And it is, it is sort of a longer process and it's harder than saying, just eat this 
you know, list of allowed foods or just do this workout. But in the end, it works much better because it is customized to each one of us. Um, so just I want to share a couple of reasons why I'm so passionate about what I do. Um, three reasons. So number one, I get the same questions from women over and over and over again. And like I said, a lot of women come to me uh, almost as a last resort. They're frustrated. They're struggling. They've tried X, Y, and Z thing. Um, and they're not seeing the results. And so often it's not a matter of having more willpower or trying harder or doing better. It's about actually knowing what you need to do for your body. So that's what we're going to go into today. Um, second reason that I'm so passionate about this, and this is a great group to talk about it with, is that these recommendations, like the current recommendations, um, most of the current research out there, it is all done on men and people don't know that up until 1994, it was actually illegal for women to participate in, uh, clinical research studies. And, um, just because, uh, women are more complicated, our bodies go through monthly cycles, our bodies change, um, throughout as we go through, you know, regular cycling, pregnancy, perimenopause, menopause, we change so much and the, you know, the powers that be that are doing the research, that's too complicated. They don't want that complication. So they just study men. And even as far as like, when they do this research on mice, they limit it to male mice and don't do female mice. So there's emerging science about women's bodies and what women need. And I've sort of gathered as much as I can um, find out there to work with my clients, but there's not much. And most of the current recommendations uh, are really researched on men. So they don't work as well on women and leaves women feeling like they're the problem. They're the failure, which is not the case. And then the third reason is um, what used to work just fine for most women there comes a certain point where it doesn't work anymore. And that's what I'm talking about hitting your late thirties. Um, I am 40 years old. I just turned 40 this summer. I'm starting to see a little bit of that too. Most of my clients are in that age range of late thirties to forties, fifties, and sixties. So I have clients who are in perimenopause, who are postmenopause, and who are regularly cycling. But for each one of those groups, you really need to be doing a different um, program and really being aware of what your body needs at that stage in your life. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong. Your life is not over, but it's really important to understand how to support your hormones, how to adjust your diet, how to adjust your exercise, how to adjust your life to support your body in what it's going through at that stage. And then it's going to change. <laughs> and then so changing it up to support it as it goes through the next stage. And once you kind of have an awareness and an understanding of what's going on internally and how to support it, it makes it so much less frustrating and easier to see those results. But again, most, um, you know, most basic health, fitness, weight loss pr prescriptions and recommendations totally don't take that into account. They're made for like 20 year old men. Um, and then again, leave women feeling like they're the problem when it doesn't work and just having more willpower um, isn't working. So it's really important that we consider these different stages in life as well. Okay, so today I am going to go through four of the you know basic principles. Like, like I said, each of us is so different on the inside that it really is important to take these principles and then fine tune it and really find what works with you. But these are basic principles that I find um, most women either you know aren't doing or don't know or um, really need to apply that will be a helpful starting block to being in better health, whether you have a weight loss goal or just a goal for better health or a goal of knowing what you need and being more confident in nourishing your body. Okay, so first one, first question I get a lot is help. I'm eating clean, or you could insert any, any kind of buzzword or fad diet, keto, paleo, vegan, and I still can't lose weight. My goal is to lose weight. 
Um, so the secret is you can't out exercise a, a bad diet. Um, and what I mean by bad diet is not necessarily that the food is good or bad, but that regardless of what you're eating, if your goal is um, weight loss or fat loss, you have to be in a calorie deficit period. That's it. There's so much marketing out there that um, keto is the magic solution for weight loss. Uh, pale, uh, paleo is like not talked about that much anymore, but um, intermittent fasting is the magic solution for weight loss. Maybe going vegan or just eating clean. And all of these things could be good options if they work for you. Um, I don't recommend keto for women just because of our hormones. Um, and I wouldn't recommend it long-term for anyone. Um, but regardless of which, you know, type of kind of fad diet or buzzword you're trying to do in order to lose weight, you have to be in a calorie deficit. And the catch 22 is the only way to know if you're in a calorie deficit is if you're losing weight. So it's really important. And this is where I work closely with my clients to, um, set a number of Cal not just calories, but then break it down into how much protein, carbs, and fat uh, you should be eating each day without trying to restrict any food groups or uh, adopt a certain quote unquote diet with like limited um, food options, but just getting those pillars of protein, carbs, and fat, and then tracking what you're eating to see how much am I eating how, what, how is my body responding? The only way to know if you're in a deficit is if you're losing weight. And the only way to lose weight is if you're in a deficit. So, um, that's, uh, just sort of like basic science of our bodies. And it's, it is, like I said, a little complicated. None of these things are going to be magical solutions, except for two things that I'm going to share. Um, but it's really important that, you know, yeah, of course, eating clean or eating healthy is really great and a wonderful goal. Um, but, you know, for example, I was thinking about the example of like avocados. Avocados are touted as really healthy, really good for you. And they are, right? It is a healthy source of fat. It has a lot of fiber. It's a great option. But if you're eating five avocados a day, you're still going to be pretty high on your calories. And although you may be quote unquote, eating healthy, not going to be losing weight. Same thing. Um, there's a lot of health food out there that is, uh, tar you know, targeted as health food, and it's not really going to help you lose weight. I see beautiful pictures of acai bowls that have lots of fruit, granola, peanut butter, honey, bananas, um, and probably about 1500 calories, which is close to what a small sized woman would be eating in a day. And it's all carbs, no protein and no healthy fat. So that kind of health food, um, you know, so I try to get clients um, to sort of steer away from that language of healthy versus unhealthy, good food versus bad food, and really just focus on the building blocks of what they're eating, how much protein, how much carbs, how much fat, and then putting that together to hit their total calorie goal for the day. Um, Okay. So that's the first secret is that you really just need to, to know those calories. And I know counting calories sounds boring, but really tracking what you're eating is the best way to understand what you're putting into your body. And you don't have to do it forever, but it's really, really helpful. And is the best way to see that, um, change in your health, your, your size, your body, uh, transformation. Any questions on that before I move on to the second secret? No. Okay. Cool. Okay. So question number two, I get a lot, a lot, a lot. And I hate this because I love eating, <laughs> but I have women who come to me and they say, help. I am, I'm eating like 1200 calories a day. Um, I'm super disciplined. I am tracking things. I, I know I'm eating really healthy and I still can't lose weight or I stopped losing weight. Um, so the secret number two is that cutting calories is not always the answer. Um, you may actually need to eat more to lose weight. And that's because our 
metabolism isn't just linear. You know, a lot of, a lot of people know that phrase calories in versus calories out is going to help you lose weight. Um, that is actually not accurate. Our metabolism is what's called constrained. So if you picture that you start out just, you know, quote unquote normal before you go on any diet, you're eating about 2000 calories and burning about 2000 calories. Our metabolism is always, it's adaptable. It's set to adjust to kind of whatever we're throwing at it. And that's really a good thing. That's what we want. So, you know, back in the old days where starvation or hunger, um, was a problem, and then people would maybe go on a hunt and get a whole bunch of food. Our metabolism is designed to handle higher amount of calories and then go back to normal and the lower amount of calories and go back to normal. And it always kind of settles with what is the average number of calories we're putting into our body. So what happens when most people decide to quote unquote go on a diet is we cut our calories. And then for a little bit, you lose weight because your metabolism is burning up here and the input of calories. And I just want to say, remember, calories are just a measure of energy. So I could say you're putting in this much energy and your body is burning this much energy. It's burning more. And so it's, it's burning off the reserves that you have, but eventually that metabolism adapts and it comes down to where you're giving it. And that weight loss is going to plateau. Um, it's going to stall out and you're going to be sitting back at what we call maintenance again. So the input of energy is at the same that your body's burning it because it's adapted. So at that point, what most people, most women do is they say, oh, this diet isn't working anymore. Um, either number one, uh, F it, I'm going to just give up. And why, why should I try so hard anyway? I'm just going to have the whole bag of cookies or the, you know, pizza or whatever, and kind of bounce back um, and let that pendulum swing to like a binge or eating too much because they've been so restricted for a while. Um, and then you're, and you're inputting more energy than your body is able to handle and gaining extra weight or gaining the weight back. That's why people, when they stop a diet, usually gain more weight than they lost. Um, or number two, I say, okay, I just need to buckle down and try harder. And then they decrease those calories again, decrease that energy input. And again, they start losing weight. They're, they're winning, you're doing it. And then it goes down and adapts again. It stops the weight loss stops and the plateau starts again. Um, and you can see how this either results in sort of like a yo-yo diet, right. Of like cut calories. It works. It doesn't work. I stop the diet and then I gain the weight back or I keep cutting, keep cutting, keep cutting until I'm only eating way down here. And when your metabolism is adapted way down here, these are my 1200 a day, ladies, 1200 calories a day, ladies, our body only has energy for like the most basic functions. And that's where I see women saying, I don't have energy. Um, I'm in a bad mood. I have brain fog. I'm irritable, short tempered with my kids, um, trouble sleeping. That's because our body is in literally starvation mode. And it's saying like, okay, what, what functions can I eliminate that take energy? I'm only getting this much energy. And on top of that, I am conserving as much, um, stored body fat as possible because clearly I'm being starved and I don't know why, right? So our body does not like being hungry. Our body does not like being starved. Um, so when I have clients like that, what we do is we work on very slowly bringing up those calories. So it's not, a, it's not that binge, you know, where all of a sudden it's um, a shock to the system, but just slowly bringing them back up and restoring that hormonal health, restoring that metabolic health and getting that metabolism burning like a strong fire again. And what I see with most of those women is they're eating way more than they were before. Their energy is up. Their mood is up. Um, they are, their body is able to release some of that stored body fat because it feels safe. It knows it's getting that regular influx of calories. Um, and so they're actually eating more and losing weight. And, um, that's an amazing thing. And, and on top of that, what I really love is they say my energy's up. I feel so much better. Now I have energy to like go for these walks or do these workouts and stuff like that. So, um, 
that is uh, secret number two. And I know those sound like um, kind of uh, number one is you have to be in a calorie deficit, but number two is it can't be that much. You really have to um, find that Goldilocks area where you're in a small calorie deficit, not enough to um, you know, adapt your metabolism long-term or affect your hormonal health. But just that little, um, little deficit, um, and that is why, you know, a lot of times when people do these like juice cleanses or detox or fast, um, you know, five day kickstart, it's a really big calorie deficit that works for like maybe three, four, five days, maybe a week or something. And then in the long run, it's just messing up their long term health. So um, when I work with clients, I really hope that they, they understand like this is a long game. It's a patient it's a patience game. It's a long-term game. And it is really important to, to preserve that long-term health our metabolic health and hormonal health, especially as women. And as we're um, aging, because we need more than anything for our hormones to be aligned and healthy and metabolism to be strong and functioning as well. Okay. Any questions about that before I go on to number three? No. Okay. So, uh, secret number three, um, is about moving our body. So we're moving on from nutrition and the question, another question I get is help I'm eating, I'm eating right. Like I, these might be clients who have taken some of my webinars or they know they're getting, you know, enough calories. They're eating healthy. They're eating well. Um, I still can't lose weight. And the secret, the next secret, number three is how you move your body really matters. Um, and exercise is not enough. And so what I mean by that is there are um, two buckets that I would put under the umbrella I call movement or fitness. One is daily movement. The, the formal term for, for it is NEAT stands for non-exercise activity thermogenesis, just means is how much, how many calories, how much energy is your body burning during our normal daily movement? It could be steps, it could be gardening, it could be household chores, it could be running errands, um, could be chasing around after kids or grandkids, it could be any of that stuff, but it's not formal workouts. Okay, it's just like how much are you moving? And the, the easiest way to track that is um, by tracking your steps. And now it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have to be like quote unquote steps. Uh, it doesn't have to be quote unquote going for a walk, but that is a good approximation to know about how much you're moving during the day. That, those, those steps, those daily steps, that daily movement is really important. And in fact, is more important than the other bucket, which is exercise or, you know, quote unquote, formal workouts where you go to the gym, you do cardio or strength training or a class and get sweaty for an hour. Um, because most people, especially today in 2021 with COVID and with working remotely, we get up, <laughs> walk to our home office where I am right now, walk 10 steps to the refrigerator, 10 more steps to the bathroom. So average, um, you know, average American is actually walking about 2,500 to 3,000 steps a day. Our paleo ancestors evolved and thrived to walk about 10,000 steps a day, which is about two and a half to three miles. Um, that is really the gold standard to be aiming for is like 10,000 steps a day. So, um, and the reason it's so important is because this uh, daily activity, this non-exercise activity thermogenesis, that contributes to about 15 to 20% of our metabolism, whereas exercise or workouts, even one workout a day only contributes to about 5% of our metabolism. So if you have to pick one, <laughs> going for a walk um, and getting those steps up every day is going to be much more important in your long-term health and um, metabolism and any weight loss goals than doing like a workout a couple times a week. 
So that's one very important thing. How you move your body matters. Exercise, exercise, you know, quote unquote, is not enough. You need to be getting those steps moving throughout the day um, and getting lots of walking. The other important secret is that what type of exercise you do really matters. I am a huge proponent of strength training for women. Um, most of my clients come to me, um, if they are exercising, they do mostly cardio. Maybe it's the elliptical, maybe it's um, spin class like right now. And especially during COVID Peloton has gotten really important. People think, oh, I'm just going to go on my Peloton and do a ride. Um, and that's great. But if your goal is fat loss, if your goal is long-term health, if your goal is a body transformation of building muscle and losing fat, which is what I really encourage most people to set their goal at. It's not just about being a smaller person. It's about being stronger, leaner, and having less body fat. You have to be strength training. And so here's why it's so important. Um, Strength training raises your metabolism for up to about 72 hours. Um, so on top of the calories you burn during the workout, it's going to keep that metabolism elevated for actually a couple of days while it repairs the muscles that were um, actually damaged during the strength training workout. That's how it works. So the older, weaker muscles are kind of broken down, new, new healthy ones are built up, and that all takes energy. Um, number two, Strength training builds muscle, which increases our metabolism at rest, and then therefore is going to help with long-term fat loss. So if you, the more muscle that you have on your frame, the better is going to be for your long-term fat loss goals and long-term health, because the muscle is metabolic tissue. It requires more energy, even at rest. So if you have two people, two women say who both weigh 150 pounds, one is just, um, has more muscle and less body fat. And the other one is more body fat and less muscle. So those are the options, right? There, there's no other option. You either have the, the weight is either fat or muscle. Um, so two women weighing the same one with more muscle, the one with the more muscle is going to have a higher metabolism all the time because that muscle needs energy to, to stay there. Um, she may also be physically smaller than the other woman who weighs the same, but has a higher percentage of body fat because that muscle is denser and heavier. So, you know, in terms of looking at that body transformation, how do your clothes fit? How do you feel? Um, having muscle is always, always, always going to be beneficial. And then it's going to be sort of like a, like an investment in your health 401k, because it's the gift that keeps giving, even when you're sitting around watching Netflix, even when you're sleeping, your body requires more food, more energy to just sustain that muscle mass. And I always tell my clients, my goal is for them to be eating as much as possible and losing weight and hitting their goals. This is not about, um, starvation or making yourself go hungry or anything like that. Um, strength training also has really important health benefits aside from um, building muscle and losing fat. It reduces major heart disease risk factors, um, reduced blood pressure, increased muscle sensitivity, it strengthens bones, which is really, really important as we age, um, increases bone density. It also reduces fatigue, anxiety, depression, tension. And it just makes you feel like a badass. You get done lifting and you feel like, oh, I am strong. I am powerful. I can do hard things. Um, I always say I've never seen someone get off an elliptical machine and feel like uh, the kind of swagger that you get from strength training. Um, so, uh, and then just to say cardio is not um, terrible. It's just not really that helpful in hitting our goals. I try to have my clients do maybe two or three 20 to 30 minute cardio sessions because it is good for overall cardiovascular health. And if that's the way that you love to move your body, whether it's a bike ride or a run or a Zumba class or dancing, that's great, but it should not be your primary form of exercise, especially as we age, and it's always going back to being women. And as we age, cardio 
um, as opposed to all those benefits I said of strength training, it actually, it will increase your metabolism just during the, you know, workout. But as soon as the heart rate goes down, your metabolism goes back to where it was. And it's sending the signal to your body to shed any extra tissue. Um, and so you're going to be losing muscle, which I was just talking about all the long-term benefits of having muscle, um, as well as fat. And that's why you see a lot of people who are sort of like cardio bunnies have that sort of skinny fat look. It is impossible to get like lean and toned, um, just from doing cardio, it's going to signal to your body to shed anything. Um, and it's also quite stressful, which is going to go into the fourth thing I'm talking about. Cardio is much more stressful on our body than strength training. And most women that I work with already have very high stress lives. So, um, walking and strength training are going to work to decrease the stress level, the cortisol level and increase the metabolism. Cardio is going to do the opposite. So I say only do cardio. If you really love it, you really, um, otherwise just getting in lots of steps and movement really don't even need to. And, um, just walking. I said there was going to be a magical solution to, uh, weight loss. Walking is actually one of those. It is one of the best things. Definitely one of the things I used to laugh at and make fun of when I was younger and definitely not do. And now it is the foundation of what I do for my own health and how I set up my clients for success. So it's a really um, great opportunity to get out in nature. Um, you can do whatever you want when you're walking, right? Walk with a friend, walk with a family member, have a phone call, listen to podcasts, uh, or just be like totally quiet. So if you feel like, oh, I never get any quiet time, never get any time to myself, walking would be great. Oh, I never have time to call my mom, my sister, my cousin. Walking would be great. Never get a chance to read. Audiobooks are amazing. Um, so it's a great time to do any of those things. And there's also tons of studies that show that walking, especially outside in nature, does wonders for decreasing cortisol levels, which also helps with burning fat and improving our long-term health. Um, it also helps spurn creativity and productivity. So if you feel like, oh, I'm so busy, I don't have time to do this, I promise you, you actually don't have time not to do it because you could sit at your desk all day and, you know, kind of slog through some brain fog, or you could move your body for 10, 20 minutes outside, come back feeling refreshed, feeling energized and get those creative juices flowing. Okay, so any questions about that? I just have a comment actually, Annie, to just support your um, comment you said about walking. Mm -hmm. I experienced a great improvement on that because for my mental health well being mm -hmm. and my journey, um, you know, that I was going on, I found out that, you know, the doctors had recommended me to do that and I was thinking yeah right and actually <laughs> when I tried it uh, my high blood pressure reduced the stress level reduced I was able to feel refreshed to go back and concentrate on what I wanted mm -hmm. but it, to me it felt like a silly thing to do but mm -hmm. it actually adds value yeah thank you for sharing that yeah it really does and that's where I say you know in my younger years I would just hit the gym hard every day and never would go for a walk I thought that is like an old person thing but it is really really beneficial and like Tabitha said decreasing stress um, boosting uh, helpful for mental health helpful for creativity and focus and productivity and still important. I thought COVID was about to be over, but really helps with boosting our immune system as well. Um, and if you can combine it with getting out in green space or nature, you know, whatever, obviously most of us live in Minnesota. I think everyone here is from Minnesota, but you know, so sometimes in the winter that is nearly impossible. Um, so a treadmill works as well, but if you can get outside in nature and um, you'll almost double the benefits from having that uh, quote unquote green therapy as well. Okay. And then the last secret that I have last question I receive a lot is help. I am truly doing everything right. I'm doing everything you said. I'm tracking my food. I'm hitting my macros. Um, I'm, I'm walking, I'm exercising. I still can't lose weight. 
And the last secret I have for you ladies today is if your hormones are out of whack, um, you may be doing quote unquote, everything right. And still not seeing the results you want. I'm just going to check the chat box snowshoeing. Oh yes, Liz. That's a great one. I always say if people are going to choose to live in Minnesota, cause we're all adults and we all make choices, right? We, we all live here by choice. You have to have an outdoor winter sport and whether it's snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, we started sledding a lot last year. Whew, that was a lot of steps and a lot of fun also. Um, but that is so good for your mental health versus just staying cooped up inside the house all winter or only walking on a treadmill. So um, that's a great, uh, thanks for sharing that, Liz. Yeah, if you can find a winter quote unquote sport, um, you know, anything from um, broom ball to snowshoeing, cross country skiing, that will be really good to help you A, get those steps and B, help with, you know, your mental health and your energy as well. Um, okay. So last thing is just if your hormones are out of whack, um, you might be doing everything, you know, by the textbook that, you know, they talk about everywhere else doing it right and not seeing the results. And the three most important things for supporting your hormones, and these are when I say my second thing where there actually is sort of a magical solution um, to helping with your health or fat loss or body transformation goals is stress, sleep, and supporting your cycle. Um, so number one, uh, stress. The women that I work with, like I said, most of them are professionals or business owners in their 30s, 40s, 50s, or 60s. That is a super high stress time of life for anyone. And then adding to it, being a woman, you know, more of caregiving duties falls on us. And it's sort of that sandwich, um, I don't know, generation, but that sandwich, they call it, where you may be taking care of young children and also aging parents at the same time. Um, and then on top of that, you know, the pressures of being a professional running your own business. And in the last year, year and a half with COVID and, um, you know, the political things, racial unrest, all that's going on. There's just so much chronic stress out there. Um, and so I could, I, in my, in my coaching, I do, uh, like a whole hour long, Thing about stress and how to decrease it, how to manage it. Um, so I don't really have time to go into that all today, but I will just say, if you, you know, feel like you're doing everything right, but you are living this high stress life and you're not able to hit your goals, that is probably the reason. Um, and then just, you know, scientifically the what's going on in our body, stress includes, increases our blood glucose, it sends a skyrocketing um, so that our body is triggered to store fat until we feel safe and we feel and we feel comfortable um, because our body evolved to um, that the biggest stressor was threats like starvation. So our body hasn't quite caught up that no one's starving in 2021 in Minnesota, um, but we are getting those stress inputs and the way our body responds, especially as women is to store body fat um, so that we can carry on the next generation of humans. Um, I think there might've been something in the chat. Let me just check. Um, to, oh, that's a good question. Is there a way to measure our hormone levels? Yes, there is a thing called a Dutch test. Let me put this in the chat. It's called a Dutch test um, to measure hormone levels. Um, and I have a friend who's a, a coach and a practitioner who does that and then works through the results with your clients. If you're interested, um, you could reach out to me and I can um, you know, connect you with her. Uh, your doctor may also be able to steer you in the right direction. Um, I don't necessarily think that's um, necessary unless I have clients who are doing all these things that we know like are the right things to do. They're managing their stress or decreasing stress or getting enough sleep and it's still not working because a lot of times with the hormonal stuff, 
um, once they get out of whack, they're kind of stuck there until we do something to to get them right. Like if they if they're a little bit off track, it might just be like, okay, meditate, go for a walk, get some more sleep, take a vacation. Resting is so so important and really undervalued in our in our culture today. But if you're doing all those things and still not seeing results, then it might be time to get that testing. Or if you just want to do it and see like how you're doing, you can always do that too. Um, Second factor that really affects our hormones is sleep. And this goes hand in hand with um, stress. If you're not sleeping enough and your body is interpreting that as stress, um, if you're stressed out, you may not be sleeping because you're thinking about, um, you know, all the things that you're stressed out about. So they're, they kind of go hand in hand, but sleep is really, really important to our body's ability to recover, to burn fat. If you have fat loss goals to build muscle, um, for mental health and then, you know, mental clarity and productivity the next day and for our mood. And, um, you know, so there's some some short-term effects of not sleeping. And there's also some really kind of detrimental long-term effects of the chronic sleep deprivation. Um, and then on top of that, what I see with a lot of my clients is it's directly related. The nights they tell me they know they didn't get enough sleep. The next day they're having all kinds of carb and sugar cravings because their body just wants energy in any form possible. And what they really need is a good nap or a good night's sleep. Um, but the signals are messed up because your, your hormones that tell you when you're hungry and when you're full get messed up if you don't have enough sleep and they get kind of out of whack. And so instead of saying, Hey, I'm sleepy. They're saying, Hey, get a cookie. Hey, get me some coffee. Um, Hey, that biscuit looks really good. Um, and then, you know, that kind of gives the sound of like a sugar, a sugar high and then a crash. And then, you know, just sort of that negative cycle. We don't want to be going down. And then the last thing, you know, where our hormones come into play is really supporting your cycle. And I do a whole webinar on this. I do a whole session with all my clients. So I don't really have time to go into all the cycle, women's cycle and hormonal stuff today. But um, I'm just going to say that as we go through these different stages of life and womanhood from getting a regular menstrual cycle, maybe being pregnant, um, moving through perimenopause, and then uh, postmenopause, each of those cycles, we need to be knowing what to do to support um, our hormones, our changing hormone levels. Um, and as we, you know, as you go through perimenopause, you're losing progesterone, which is really calming. Um, and so that is a time to really focus on um, self-care, rest, recovery, and kind of become the queen of self-care. And then post-menopause, on top of losing progesterone, we're losing estrogen. Estrogen is a really carb-friendly hormone. And so um, at that time, it's really important to really be consistent with the um, finding that Goldilocks level of carbs that you're giving to your body, not too many, not too little, because you've lost that hormone that's really res resilient in terms of dealing with carbs. Um, so eating a consistent level of complex carbs, sort of sadly, but, but truly eliminating more of the processed or sugar kind of stuff from your diet and shifting to more complex carbs, being much more cognizant about stress management and sleep and recovery, uh, getting lots of walking as a primary form of exercise and movement. So as you go through each of those stages, walking and traditional strength training should be more and more important and less and less of the high intensity workouts and the really stressful stuff. Your body just needs lots of gentle movement, stretching, and then a couple of times a week of heavy strength training. Heavy for you, right? It doesn't have to be like a bodybuilder in the gym. Um, so I will just want to leave you ladies with a five step um, blueprint that you can take away from this with things that are very easy to implement that you can start doing today, uh, right? So number one, uh, it is kind of complicated to figure out how many calories you need to be eating, not too much, too, not too little, but I would tell you leading with protein 
Um, so meat, eggs, dairy, um, tofu, vegan, vegan or vegetarian sources of protein, leading with protein at every meal and every snack, and then getting lots of fiber um, will help to be full and satisfied and stop when you're full. So like thinking about how am I getting protein? How am I getting fiber for every meal and every snack will really help so much of our meals and especially snacks are just sort of like quick carb, carb type things. And, um, they taste really good. And then we're hungry again, you know, 30 minutes later, number two, along with that drinking half your body weight in water every day really is like another magical uh, health solution on par with walking and sleeping. Those are like the trinity of health. I tell everyone to start with drink more water, walk more, sleep more. Um, and if you start with aiming for half your body, half your body weight in ounces, that is a good place to start up to um, about a gallon a day, uh, which is 128 ounces. So anywhere in there, might be a big change from where you are uh, right now. Uh, number three, commit to taking a walk outside every day. Uh, whether it's, you know, starting with five minute walk around the block after dinner or a morning walk, it does not have to be long. But if you're currently moving your body, not at all, adding in a walk around the block is going to be a huge change, you know, so kind of just pay attention to where you are and see how you can increase that and how you can build more steps into your day. One of my favorite tricks is to always park in the back of every parking lot and just get a couple more steps, you know, going in and out of Target or the gym or something like that. Um, and even that's getting hard because so much is automated through delivery these days, but just finding those steps when you can. Number four is start really paying attention to your stress level and not using that as a badge of honor. Um, but more, more seriously, think about how you can decrease stress and how you can manage the stress that you can't um, offload. It's really super important. Meditation is a great way to start. Walking is a great way to start. Listening to um, comedy or great music. There's so many ways out there. Um, so it's just a matter of finding something that works for you. And then number five, sleep. And what I really recommend is to set a bedtime and set a bedtime routine and commit to it and treat yourself like, you know, if you have kids or you've ever babysat, you know, most kids have a bedtime and it's bath, book, bedtime every single night. And that sets them up for success and also gives their parents a little breathing room, right? Um, and that's because we love that little four or five-year-old. We want them to get a good night's sleep. We know it's important for their growth and development. Is the same with us. As we go into adults, we get, oh, I can do whatever I want. And then it turns into, oh, yeah, I'm just going to watch this next uh, Netflix show. And before you know it, staying up late, scrolling through media, watching Netflix, doing stuff we really don't intend to do. So my last takeaway for you ladies is set a bedtime that gets you a minimum of seven hours of sleep more if you know you need it um, and a, a routine to help trigger your body to, to signal, okay, it's time to wind down. It is time to get ready for bed and then really get that sleep. Like it's as important as it is. Oh yes. Uh, I have a comment that I know that sleep is an important one and something I can work on. I get that a lot. A lot of my clients always say, I know I'm not sleeping enough. I know I'm not <laughs> drinking enough water. Um, I, I know I'm not moving. And it's, you know, it's stuff that, you know, it is simple, but the hard part is, is putting it into practice every day and taking it really seriously, um, taking it as seriously as it is and as seriously as your health is important um, because there's a lot of push the other way from our culture, staying up late, drinking alcohol, not drinking water, you know, connecting with friends by sitting and having a drink versus going for a walk, stuff like that. Um, okay. That is all I have for you ladies today. I hope this is helpful. Um, normally I am ramping up for, um, my group coaching program where we go over all of this stuff, um, in depth. I've had a lot of novel ladies go through it, uh, at this point. Um, but I am not right now, because like I said, in the beginning, um, we're getting ready to welcome our little girl in the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to be taking some downtime and my, um, 
I will be taking on one-on-one -on -one clients and my group program, but not until later in the fall. So um, if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them um, and give you some resources and um, I, in, uh, happy to add any of you to my email list and uh, would love to stay in touch. So thank you so much um, for all of you for taking this time with me this morning. Um, Jackie is on another call. Um, so I'm just going to end it. She had overlapping um, Navo duties this morning. So I am going to uh, just close the call. Um, I've had a few of you put your emails in the chat box. If you um, would like me to add you to my email list, I would love that. Just shoot me your email um, and I will add you and you can stay in touch. I'll let you know when my next um, openings are for one-on-one -on -one clients. Uh, or my group program. I also do a lot of other free webinars and trainings as well. So thank you ladies so much. Oh, thank you for congratulations on the baby <laughs> um, and have a wonderful day. Bye.